Your mouth might be the biggest enemy stopping your blessings. Watch what comes out of your mouth. The words you speak are alive. The Bible says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who have it will eat the fruits thereof. Be careful how you speak. You may be thinking your enemies are at work in your life, but that enemy can be your mouth. Some people go around saying whatever they like to say, without thinking of tomorrow. The words you speak cannot be reversed once it comes out. It's become a seed, and it will grow. When you continue to confess that you've died, any small thing that happens to you, the first thing you shout is, I'm dead. My dear, very soon you will die. When you speak negatively, the only thing that will be consistent in your life is negativity. So also, when you speak positivity, you will be seeing only positive things in your life. It does not matter what's happening in your life. Speak good words over your life. If the Lord says you are the head and not the tail, even if you fail an exam, confession should remain the same. This is not to deny the reality. This is just refusing to make the situation you're in right now your permanent situation. By the word of the Lord, the walls were framed and all things came to be. The Lord in Genesis only spoke a word. He commanded that let there be sun, the moon, the stars, the valleys, the mountains, and every other thing on this earth. He used the words of his mouth. Words are powerful. Learn to say the right words. Did you know that you can be your own worst enemy? Your thoughts and words can either be used by Satan to hurt you or by God to bless you. Power of death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. Proverbs 18 verse 21 Your words are what guide your life. You may be the kind of person who thinks it doesn't matter to speak anyhow. Or maybe you say whatever you want to say and just believe it doesn't matter. Listen to me. There are spirits around and they listen. We're not ignorant of the devil's devices. We know he is the king of this earth. If you say the right words, the angel of God takes those words and runs with them for you. But if you speak the wrong words, in your adversary the devil listens and begins to activate those powers in you. Words are very powerful. Know what to say and when to say it. You may be crying and wondering what's going wrong in your life. But have you checked your daily activities? Have you checked what you spit out of your mouth daily? Those are the things that form your very person. I want you to put it at the back of your mind that what you inform people about who you are, you may think that this is a joke, but it's not. How you constantly talk says a lot about how you think. What you say is a close representation of how you think, so watch what you say. People are watching you who can either bless you with how you speak or not. Imagine the person who's supposed to bless you with a job is around you, and he or she does not like cursing. Yet in every of your sentences, you continue to curse. Fortunately or unfortunately for you, you met with this person at a home interview. If God does not intervene in your situation, you may not be able to get that job. So watch what you say. Even if you want to play, Remember the Bible says there is time for everything, and a season for everything under the sun. The Lord said, My will for you is to be blessed, yet you condemn yourself by your own words on your tongue. You speak evil against your life. Rebuke that evil from your life. Pluck it out. With your mouth, you curse, and with that same mouth, you worship God. With your words, you condemn yourself. It is evil and harmful to you. 
learn to spell positive things in your life. Things may not be working out fine for you, but it doesn't matter. Speak good things over your life, and it shall be well with you. If you want it so bad that all you do is talk about it, what are you saying? Are you speaking your dreams into existence, or are you blocking your blessing? This is a question you need to ask yourself: Are you blocking your blessing by what you say, or are you proclaiming that you are the blessed of the Lord, or are you sitting down and allowing the devil to dance on your head? The Bible in Ephesians six verse twelve says, "For we are not wrestling with flesh and blood." Contending only with physical opponents, but against the despotisms, against the powers, against the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural sphere. We know what we wrestle, withstand, so we will not relax by being careless of what we say and what we do. Sometimes we can be our own worst enemy when it comes to our thoughts and our choice of words. When you put negative energy into the atmosphere, you know that the enemy will use your own words against you. That's when he'll start telling you, "You're never going to be anything to anyone. You're never going to get that far. You might as well stop wasting your time and give up now." The sad part about it is, many of us will give in to that fear. Why? Because we are the ones who planted the seed. Yet the Lord God spoke and continued speaking, saying, "Diligent obedience to the voice of God brings blessings. Blessings overtake us as we choose life, but curses can also overtake us as we choose death. We obey what we believe." And so the seed of all sin is unbelief. Quote, "Your tongue is your attitude. Your words are who you are. Speak positive and receive positive. Speak negative and continue as you are. You are in control, not me. Whatever is bound on earth is bound in heaven. My hands are tied until you get your attitude corrected." Speak to me of your needs and rejoice in my blessing. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and find. Knock and it will be opened. You have not, because you ask not, and speak falsely against it when you have asked. Lean on me and I will supply all. Lean on yourself and failure will come. By your choosing. Evil comes upon you. You speak it into existence and allow it in your midst. Seek scriptures on my blessing for you. End quote. The children of Israel are a great example of the point I want to make. Don't let your mouth stop your blessing. God had already told them that the land was theirs and to go and possess it, but they said. We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we are. They forgot that it wasn't about them. God had already told them what He would do, so it wasn't about what they could do, but what they could do with God. And if you continue to read in Numbers fourteen, they continue to talk about how they would die in the wilderness. The whole congregation began to cry and mourn. Except for two of them, Joshua and Caleb, they were the only ones that said, "Let's go up at once and possess the land." And as a result of their words, God said in Numbers fourteen verse twenty-eight to thirty-five, "Say unto them, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in mine ears, so will I unto you." And God went on to say. How that whole generation of that congregation that spoke would die in the wilderness, except two of them, Joshua and Caleb. So the ones that said they would die in the wilderness got what they said, 
and the ones that said, We are able and let us go up at once and possess it, got what they said. Notice, in Psalm 78 verse 41 it says, Ye, they turned back and tempted God, and limited the Holy One of Israel. How do you think they limited the Holy One of Israel? With their words. Another clear-cut example of your words stopping your blessing is found in 2 Kings 7 verse 1 and 2. When there was a great famine in the land, and the king of the land went to go see the man of God, to get a word from the Lord. And Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel, in the gate of Samaria. Now watch the response of the king's helper. Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And the man of God said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. Notice that the man's words cut him off from something he had a right to. Do not let your words cut you off from your blessing.